Well, what's up, peoples? How are you guys doing? Hope things are going good in the, your, your world of building a Mustang or what have you. Today, I'm gonna walk you through how to rebuild your clutch and brake pedal assembly um, and install needle roller bearings so that this thing really, really is smooth. And uh, I think you're gonna find that this is gonna be the absolute best way to put this together. So, that's coming up. So before we get into this video real quick, let me bring something to your attention. I have a, and I hope you can see that here, this is a complete parts list for those of you who are interested in converting your coupe to a fastback. I have the first of many of these lists already produced, and this is for the 1967 and 68 fastback. If you wanna make a coupe into a fastback, this is a complete parts guide that's available for you. That is on my Gum Road account. The link for this is in the description of this video. I am going to very soon have a whole bunch of parts lists, um, guides, booklets, etc., over there for all kinds of things Mustang. So if you are interested in having something like that, go over there to Gum Road, my Gum Road account. Look at that link. Um, I'm going to have some $1 downloads coming up really soon there, so if you'll check back and keep on top of it, um, you'll see some stuff over there. Even like a project like today, I'm going to tell you everything in an illustrated way over there that you can get involved with. So anyway. So here is the clutch pedal assembly already removed from my car. Um, I don't have footage of that. Mine was barely in the car anyway. Um, you're going to get to see me put it back in the car when that time comes, but for today, we're just looking at rebuilding this. This is characteristic of the condition that you're gonna find your clutch and brake pedal assembly. Mine may be even a little worse than most, but pretty rusty. Um, if you'll look at this this hole, this is for your, um, your clutch push rod. And if you'll notice, look at that, how elongated that is. What I'm gonna wind up having to do with that is I'm gonna get that rust out of there. I'm gonna fill that back up. I'm gonna weld it up shut. I'm gonna grind it. And, um, and then I'll, I'll re-drill that when the time comes because I'm gonna be using a, a, a slave cylinder and I'll need that hole to be specific for what I'm using. But if you'll notice how that's eaten through. Another thing, and let me, let me pop this loose. See this big old heavy spring here? So what I'm gonna do with the clutch, let me bring it all the way around and I'll show you where the spring, <clears throat> see how this is all eaten up as well? You see that in there? I hope you can see that. So that's all eaten up. I'm gonna weld that up as well and uh, grind that, weld it, get that back strong like it should be. And so we're gonna fix that when we get to it. This bottom piece doesn't look like it's messed up where the spring goes in right there. Um, I don't know, I may have to replace that pad. I'm not exactly sure what that looks like. I know I've got a nut missing in one of the mount brackets, um, but pretty much it's, I mean, it's okay. Here's the thing, this, this, this piece, if you have to buy it, used is a couple of hundred dollars, 150 to 200 dollars. If you buy it new, it's, it could be three or 400 dollars, which is, these are those parts that are just crazy, ridiculously expensive. Now, I'm gonna show you something in mine that you're gonna probably have to see in yours. Mine has already been rebuilt at one point. You see these washers that are welded in here? These have not been welded by the factory. Somebody did that. Somebody welded those in there. So somebody has already rebuilt this. And if you look right here, let me show you. If you look right here, you're gonna see pieces of copper where they use some type of copper, um, just a jacket inside of there. It was a sleeve that they used inside of this to try to rebuild this. And so I'm pretty sure <clears throat> this looks pretty bad on the inside. So let me, let me peel this. I'm gonna see if I can just pull this clutch pedal out with one hand. Oh, I can, look at that, look at that. It's coming out, coming out. So first of all, let me point out to you something that you need to see. I'm hoping that's gonna focus on that right there. Do you see how worn that shaft is? That's really common. These don't have any way of being greased. They're just riding on a, on a uh, sleeve. And so that's almost eaten into. I, you know, you probably, I probably could weld that up and then grind it smooth and probably make it work, but they sell a kit for it. It's not super expensive. And so, so that's, that's one of the problems right there. You can see that now. Let's look inside this thing, and if you'll see right here, see that sleeve that's in there? That's kind of a copper, so you can see pieces of it that are peeled out to the outside. That's that copper sleeve inside there. That looks pretty rough. See, they've done that same thing to this one and that side. And so 
What I'm going to have to do to rebuild this thing is I'm going to have to go inside of here and I've got to cut these out. Um, these are the, 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 the brackets that hold the, the pedal in place. And like I say, this is not factory. This is, somebody's already rebuilt this with these um, copper sleeves in it. So I'm going to cut the welds here on both sides. I'm going to pop these out because I've, I've got brand new ones as I talked to you about earlier. And I'm going to show you this because you need to see this. This is the Scott Drake um, one. I don't always get Scott Drake stuff. Sometimes I do. Sometimes they have really good parts. Sometimes not so much. I'm going to show you something I don't like about this one and I would do differently if I could do it over again. This pin, whatever that's called, this pin, which is actually this pin, that, this, this pin, which is this pin, um, and this kit does like this one. It looks like you have to, and I haven't looked at the instructions yet, but I'm assuming you're going to have to beat this and mash it out till it spreads and it, and it puts a bind in there. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shave off some of this galvanizing and I'm going to put a spot weld. I'm going to weld it on the back side so it's, it's in there really good. They sell these, these kits with this pin that actually has a nut on the back side of it. That's the way to go. I should have done that. I kicked myself. But anyway, the, the real cool part about this kit, though, is these roller bearings. That's what's going to make that clutch and brake pedal super, super smooth. These are those, these are the um, uh, jackets that, that, <clears throat> that go in right here and replace these. That's going to be great. Um, new washers. Um, this is going to be fantastic. And, and we're going to get this little booger. And there's the pin. Mine didn't even have a pin to hold the, the, the uh, clutch pedal and brake pedal all together. So somebody had had mine apart at some point. But anyway, that's what we're going to work on today. That's what we're going to install. It's Here's the part I don't understand. They welded these pieces in. These pieces. They put spot welds on them when they repaired it. Why would you weld them? They've got a lip on the inside. They sandwich between two pieces of metal. There's no reason for a weld inside there. But there's a weld inside there. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a pain in the boo-boo to get out. I mean, the way they've welded them, it's easy to stick a welding rod up in there, but it's quite difficult to try to get it out. So I'm on my fifth or sixth tool just to see if there's a possibility that this will work. Now this air hammer is older than we all are put together so it's not very strong so I'm just going to see if it'll break loose these welds. So here we are, we got the pieces knocked out. You can see I've got some grinded to do on the inside. See how nappy that is? And I couldn't get to it to cut it out. So, so I struggle with that a little bit, but I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna have to tap it a little bit, get it straightened out. I'm not sure that that hole is there from the factory. I'm gonna have to go do a little bit of research, but see this hole right here? I'm not sure they did that. So I gotta find that out. Cause otherwise I think I'm gonna weld that back shut and then grind all that down. So I got some grinding to do. And how am I going to do it, you might ask, to get in there look at that little tool right there. I told you this little thing comes in handy. That little dude will go right in there. will be no trouble at all to get that ground out. So that's next.
Here's what I would say to Scott Drake. Why would you make your instruction guide with this kind of ink that's gonna pull all the words off when I pull it apart? When I pull it out of the package, look at the package. Scott Drake, come on, man. This is your instruction guide. Put this in a separate packet if you're gonna glue it in like that. Look at this, it's peeling all the pictures off. So, look at this. Now look at this. You got all the junk pulled off of it. See the pictures? Why would you do that? <laughs> Dang it. Now it doesn't show you welding the rod onto the pedal. And it doesn't even talk about it. Y'all, this is why parts people don't understand. This is not complete. So how I'm gonna deal with this, this pedal and this, this rod right here, it doesn't tell me how to do it at all. So that's the reason why people like me exist is because I'm gonna do this for you show you guys how to do it because the people who make it aren't going to even tell you. Isn't that ridiculous? The heck? Well, I see where theirs is welded, which is probably what I'm going to wind up having to do. But why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you put that in your information? Why would you not tell us that that's what you did? I don't know. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, so we're pretty much done with this. It's pretty flat. I may test fit these real quick though. Let me just look at it. So I'm going to test fit. These pieces go in like this. Okay, so you weld this to the inside is what's supposed to happen, right? So there's that and that. Or is that to the outside? See this thing? Okay, it's to the outside. So okay, so this goes through like this and this. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of wiggle room. You're going to have to really pay attention to where you weld that thing on. That's important. Mm -hmm. I'm not some tapping. Mine's not quite flat. Okay, then. Well, that's not that big of a deal. I'll try one more thing. The clutch support thing. How, do the, how does that work inside this thing? So basically, it still goes with the same bushings that it's got, right? Well, those roller here's the thing. Those roller bearings don't solve the problem with your brake pedal because the bearings are only for these outside pieces. You see what I'm saying? So your bearings are out here, but what about inside here? There's no bearings inside of here. Uh, so that don't make sense. So that means this is still on the brake pedal as it was before. And it's and this is moving independent of your clutch pedal, so this is still a problem. So this is this kit only rebuilds the shaft and the bearings that are going to be spinning with your clutch, but it's not rebuilding. So that means that this what I've got now is what you've got. This should have bearings for it as well. How close to fitting those bearings would fit in this thing? Ooh, they wouldn't. That's the reason why that's not in there. Okay, well, that means we're gonna really need to clean these. This thing needs a zerk fitting. I'm telling you, this, this brake pedal needs a zerk fitting. You need to be able to put some grease into this thing. I'm gonna grease the crap out of it, but man, that's still gonna be sliding on that shaft. Dang it, that's not really the best way to do this, y'all. This Scott Drake, you, your instructions are terrible. I like your products most of the time. Not These instructions are incomplete, so what you do and how you handle this rod in your clutch pedal is not even addressed in these instructions. So it shows you how to put the roller bearings into the into this framework piece here, but it doesn't show you how to install this rod on your clutch. Now I can see on theirs, right here I can see that they've welded it, which is what I'm gonna do and what I'd planned on doing, but you should include that information in your product. The other thing is, is that I'm only gonna be able to weld it on one side, which I hope I can get it super tight and weld it in there. You got good information about how to put the, the roller bearing for your, your clutch, you know, your assembly. That's in there, that's good. Here's the drawback though. The drawback is, is that not only does it not include how to install this pivot shaft or whatever you want to call it for your clutch, it doesn't tell you how to install it in the clutch. Like how, like this one's pressed in and they looks like they beat it down. I don't know if you can see that. See that? 
I'm going to wind up welding that in, but they should have information about that. Here's the second thing. They have nothing, they've addressed nothing on your brake pedal. So what that means is, is your brake pedal, if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see that, but see inside there, it's got brass bushings or brass sleeves in it, but these are old. So, and this shaft looks removable. Uh, no, it's welded. Never mind, it's, it's welded. No, see that keeper clip? Looks like this shaft is removable. That should be included in the kit so that you can rebuild the clutch pedal. If you're gonna rebuild the clutch pedal, you should be able to rebuild the brake pedal rather as well. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is cleaning those up. They still feel pretty tight, but man, they're boogered up. Dang it. Let me feel that shaft again. See, here's where that shaft goes into this one. I just wanna see how tight it is. Okay, so let me show you what's happening here. So this is the clutch pedal. This is the clutch pedal shaft. This shaft is this shaft right here. Okay, I'm sorry. This shaft, this shaft is this shaft right here. It's down in the vise. And so what we're gonna do is, we're going to cut this one out, the one that's in here. We're gonna cut this out, and then I'm gonna put this one in there, and then I'm gonna weld it on the back side. but I've gotta get it good and flush and flat, and I gotta get a good, you know, situation going here. So that's what I'm working on right now. Let's Okay, let me show you what my plan is for the clutch pedal. Here's my press. There's the clutch pedal. Uh, yes, clutch pedal. That's the clutch pedal shaft. I've ground off what piece was flared on it. It doesn't look like that it is, um, that it's welded in in any way. Maybe they heat pressed it, I'm not sure, but I've got to press it out. So I'm gonna use the brake drum. This is off my wife's Tahoe. I just put brakes on it. Now I wanna be clear, I'm not recommending what I do. This is just what I'm gonna do. But I noticed that that would fit on top of my press and that fits through the hole. I think if I press that, do that like that, put a bolt on top of it like that, and hide my face from it, I think that, um, I think that's gonna work. We'll see, let's check it out. Okay, have you guys got your safety glasses on? I'm gonna put mine on. I'm putting y'all in harm's way. As Soon as I put a little pressure on this thing, I'm getting out of the way, I'm gonna hide from where this thing could shoot out from. Let me get it closer. We'll see what's gonna happen here. This may work. Who knows? I tell people all the time, they'll say, well, do you think that's gonna work? We'll put a plan together at church and they'll say, Scott, do you think that's gonna work? I'll say, you know what, it is or it won't. <laughs> I can tell you guys are crooked. I apologize about that in advance. Bad gummit. How do I do these things constantly? Okay, here we go, I need one more hand. All right, that's got tension on it. I'm getting over here behind my safety blast shield. I'm gonna watch with you guys. It doesn't look like it's budging. I'm hoping Oh, it moved. It moved. We're on to something. It's working. Yes. How could it be better? <laughs> Check it out, brother. Let's see now if I can get the bolt out. I may have picked too big of a bolt. What? I did. Looks like my bolt might be a little bit. Oh, not too bad. It's going to come out. Yep. Perfect. Look at that. I'll show you guys. Ugh. My back. All right, so look at this thing here, would you? So we got it all pressed out of there, see that? Doo -doo. There's the old one. Doo -doo. Now we're gonna press another one in there probably. That's what we'll probably do. That's pretty sick, okay, yay. Okay, kind of bad news. This fits, but I thought I might have to press it in there because the other one was that kind of tight. It's not very tight. So what I'm gonna need to do is clamp this really good. I'm gonna take the galvanizing off the end of this because I'm gonna weld it. I can't weld on the inside because I can't have a bead where this 
touches the bearing surface. So the only way that I can weld it, only side I can weld it on is this side. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna use a grinder and I'm gonna grind a little bit of grooves down in here, down the side and down the side. And by doing that, what I'm doing that for is that's gonna give me a little bit of room to get down inside there with a weld and I'm gonna weld it pretty dang hot, but it's gotta be tight. It's gonna take a little bit of work. I gotta get the, the galvanizing off of this so the weld will really stick to it. And then I've gotta get this all cleaned up really good. That's what I gotta do next. See how I open that hole up a little bit? I'm gonna look at it, see what that looks like. That gives your weld room to nest in there, and I think that's gonna do. Try to set this up in the vise where this little booger will work. That's the way to go right there. So. So what I did was once I started to assemble the, in fact, today we're going to do the assembly of the, uh, the clutch and brake pedal the, and, and fully do the rebuild kit, get it done on it. But I got to looking at where the, where the pads are that you step on and I didn't like the way they looked. And so I decided to take a piece of this, looks like quarter inch by maybe two inch aluminum bar. And I don't know where I got it. I think my dad had it. And uh, I just took a Sawzall and I measured across the, the face of, the, of the, 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 the brake and the clutch pedal. And uh, I decided that I was gonna you know, build me a face for them. And so I cut this off with a, just a regular Sawzall blade. Um, I did, by the way, I ran out of uh, card. That's the reason why I didn't show you this part of it. And then I took that um, and you can maybe see it but I put a grid on it and then I drilled these pilot holes all through it, these little bitty ones right here. And, the re and then, um, and I made me a little, to drill those pilot holes, I made me a little uh, jig, okay? I screw this in with a, with a wood screw and put it under my drill press and whoop, 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 whoop. That's what I do with it. So I drilled um, all the pilot holes and I made sure they were precisely placed on that grid and I had marks for that and I just, you know, made sure they were just right. And then I came back with a larger drill bit and I drilled larger holes and I'm not sure how this is gonna mount on the pedals yet. So that's one of the things I'm gonna work on today. So I didn't drill these out yet because these, maybe the two outside ones is what I'm thinking, are gonna actually have um, like um, cap screw headed like bolts in it with nuts on the back and that's gonna have a hole drilled through the pedal itself and this will set on top. Now, I have not um, cleaned these up yet. I haven't um, started you know, really working on them. I don't know if I'm gonna countersink these. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm not gonna drill a larger drill hole through the, through the front of them yet. I don't know. That's something I'm gonna experiment with and look at. But that's gonna be the face um, to my, my clutch and brake pedals. Once these are done, we'll do the whole assembly and this thing's gonna be done. This is the third day of me filming on this particular deal and this is probably going to be a long video for a kind of a short process but i did a little bit it, it took a lot more i really thought i was taking clutch pedals putting clutch pedal and brake pedal just in the car and we're going to run it but in classic mustang fashion um you always have to do more than what you thought that's just the way that it works so if you've not come to that that realization you don't need to work on mustangs because that is part of it but always remember i will pray for you by the way you guys know i'm a pastor the most important thing to me in my life is my relationship to Jesus. And uh, Jesus has called me to love people, and I love the opportunity to love on people. So if I can ever pray for you, message me. I'll, I will do that for sure. Let me get started on this, and let's see if we can get these um, the bolts figured out for this, uh, this piece. And uh, let's get them mounted, you know, get them cleaned up, and then mounted on the pedals, and then we're going to assemble the whole thing together. It's going to be great. Okay, so we're at the drill press. So here is my little jig I made. And if you look inside this little jig, and I make these all the time for my drill press and when I'm making different things, but see, I've got the piece of aluminum down in there. It's gonna hold it in that corner. I don't, it makes it easier to hang on to. The other thing is, is that when it drills out the back, it goes into that, that wood. 
it seems to make a better edge on the aluminum, which I'm gonna have to clean that up anyway. But still, this is kind of nice. So I'm gonna drill out these two big, big holes in the middle. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna come back in. Matter of fact, what I'll probably do is move this screw over here, drill out the two end holes to match the bolts that I'm gonna use. Um, and then I'll drill out the two holes in the middle so that all this will match. But that's what we're gonna do next. So just stay tuned. See that little setup right there? Can you see it? There it is. Looks good. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting ready to anchor this to the pedal itself. So to do that, I'm trying to square it up on that pedal where everything is pretty much the same. Looks like it's there. There she be. Let's see if I can drill that. Hmm, it's going to walk. I'll have to do a little bit of. So let me show you the next thing I did is I took this beveling bit. I don't have any idea where I got it. It's by Irwin. Um, it doesn't work very good on regular metal, but it seems to work pretty decent on these. And all I did was, if you can see the edge of these, I beveled the edge of those. So this gives a better finish look. Now I haven't started working on the finish on the face of it yet. Okay, so we're on the, on the uh, final assembly of this whole little setup, and I'm kind of excited about it, just to be honest with you. Here is our, uh, this is our finished brake pedal. Down inside of there, it's got those copper bushings that somebody put in there years ago. The kit that came from Scott Drake, and I wanna make a correction. Um, earlier I said it didn't have anything for this. It's got plastic, little plastic sleeves that go in here. Not excited about plastic, not on something that has this much pressure and junk on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with brass. Um, I think that's the way to go. So what I'm gonna do first with this little booger is I'm gonna take a big wad of this stuff right here. This grease. Oh, there goes my air compressor, of course. So, and I'm gonna take that grease and I'm gonna put it down inside that hole. Get that all greased up really good around the edge of it, and maybe overkill. We'll put it down in there anyway, because I really believe that that's a, keeping this thing lubed, there's a like a slot in between these two sleeves, if I hope you can hear me. There's a slot in between these two sleeves that I think will fill up with grease if I pack it in there like that. So, got us some grease in there. Never hurt yourself putting too much grease on it. So let me show you something. These are the little needle bearings that go in there. What I found was, that little bit of paint that was on these, these uh, bearing surfaces, that little bit of paint actually made it to where those things would not fit. So I had to take and remove a little bit of it. I like that though. That means that, the, uh, means that we're uh, like on some serious uh, clearances. So this little bearing has like a little keeper ring that goes on it. And you put that on that little bearing surface like that. See how that sets on there? Like that. Then this goes through that hole, and on the outside of it, it has one of these little rings, little, little clippy rings, okay? So I'm gonna push that clippy ring on there. 
Yeah, I know. Get the clippy ring pliers. That's what you're saying. I'm with you. Here's my little clippy ring pliers. Oh, well, the end fell off my clippy ring pliers. I'll show you how crappy this stuff is that they make today. Gosh, dang it. Nothing works, y'all. Nothing. <sighs> my clippy ring pliers are the kind that you can take apart. And they're crappy. You say, well, buy a good pair. They're expensive. So I'm going to put the little clippy ring on there. On that other side, I'll let you see this a little better. It's hard for you to see on that side. I get it. I get it. I'm going to help you. Hold on. So now i got to push this thing down in the groove. There it is on that one. There it is. I'll show you on the other side. All right, there's that one. Now, okay, this will be a little easier for you to see. So you will be more than happy with this side. So again, I'm going to take this little bearing thing, let it focus in on it. You take this little ring right here. You put it over the top of it like that. Look at that. Sloopies. Then you're going to go back behind this little piece. You're going to slip this little dude through there. Just like that. See that? Now, you're going to take your little crappy clippy ring pliers. All righty. See if we can get the clippy thing back on there. Forget how I did it the first time. Okay. We're close, I think, fellers. It's popping in there, I think. Well, the bottom ain't. Come on, man. I understand why it's got to be so dang tight. Okay, pretty dang sure she is in there. All right. goes like this. This goes like this, I think. And this goes like this. And then you push it down. It spring loads that thing. Which probably means it'll knock your brains out if you gave it half a chance. Let's take a look at this little setup now. Look at that little dumpling, would you? Doesn't that look good? Look at that! Shoot, man alive, how well does it work? I can't do the clutch one with that springy thing on there, but let's see the clutch one. <whistles> Smooth as butter. Look at them little pedals, would you? Do those not look good? That's a good looking setup, yes sir. Not a ton of money in it. That right there, see how it is on the inside? It's running on needle bearings, you know what I'm saying? Look at that, now on this side. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty nice little setup.